Now let's start with the variable operations. So variable operations, so if you have already coming from a previous uh, programming language, then you know that variable operation variables are used as a placeholder. So for example, if you are in, let's say a loan department, right? And you want to create a program, which is creating the EMIs whenever a user or the requester is coming. So every day requesters are coming with a different option, like how much amount uh, they want to take a loan on and uh, what is the rate of interest and the tenure. So based on that, you want to uh, basically do the, you want to create a program, which is calculating the EMIs. So in this case, your loan amount is a variable because loan amount will be changing. A user is coming or an, uh, a person is coming today and saying I need 100,000 as a loan. Another person is coming tomorrow may say 1 million. So that means it is varying. That's why it is a variable. Second thing is interest rate. Interest rate can be today it is like 9.5 and based on the loan instrument it can change and that's why it is variable. So we call it a variable. Third thing can be your tenure for a period like 5 years, 10 years, 15 years for how long you want a loan. So that is also changing. So all of that, what you can do is store. So for example, loan underscore amount. And if you see, this is usually the convention in which a variable is written. I would, as you, if you are starting, I would suggest that keep it like this so that your variables are pretty self-explanatory about why you are, what is this variable is all about. So now we can clearly understand this is a loan amount. And for now we are initializing it with the 100,000, right? And what I will do is I will not press shift enter. What shift enter will do, it will execute it and create a new line. But what I can do simply is press enter. As soon as I press enter, it has created a space for me in which I can write another line. So this way I can write multiple statements within one single cell. So loan amount is 100,000. Let's say interest underscore rate is 1.15, but that's not how you will write the percentage. So 1.15% is 0 0.015. So one, this will be like 1.5%, right? So that is this and then you have uh, tenure equals to let's say in years you want so five years and now if I press shift enter it has given you the output which is the last line output but that's okay what it is what I basically wanted to show you is the loan amount and now if I see show you the loan amount and multiplication of tenure so loan underscore amount just to show you the arithmetic operators. So arithmetic operator here in this case is star or asterisk, which is nothing but a sign for multiplication, multiply with amount. Now you see we are not multiplying 100,000 with five. We are basically applying a multiplication operator on loan amount and tenure and whatever be the variable value is. So here in this case, 100,005, it will be given the output or the cell will give the output based on the amount that it contains. So if I press enter, it gives, oh, it gives me the error. Um, amount, amount is not here. Uh, basically it is tenure. Um, now let's go. All right, straightforward, right? And let's say tomorrow I, somebody is coming and saying, okay, I want it for 10 years. The same thing. I press control enter. I press come here and press the enter. Okay, overall loan amount multiply with tenure is this, but whatever is the calculation, to be honest, I don't know what is the calculation that they follow in the financial world, but this is just, I wanted to show you a basic operation about why you need a variable like this. And if you observe over here, we have an integer variable. So what is an integer variable? Integer variable is basically a complete value. And over here, you have the dot notation and after dot notation, you have the value. So this is called float. 
Yes, so these are the two different types of numerical variable that is present in almost every programming language and same, same is the case with Julia. So Julia is no exception over there and uh, we can then perform the operations using star or plus, minus, divide, cap, all of that thing. So these are the two types of variables that we discussed. So first of all, how you declare the variable, right? how you can declare the uh, float variable and then let's see the third variable which is uh, star, uh, the string variable so this is basically uh, my first program equals to hello world right so today my first program is hello world if i press enter it gives me the output and if i say again my first program press shift enter hello world but tomorrow i say no my next program is the beautiful world right very straightforward so what we are doing over here we are assigning a string value to a variable which is this now think about this that you have a movie software you run a, you are you basically run a movie shop and every day people are coming to you and asking whether you have a particular movie or not so what may be happening in the back end into that software that you have the movie name variable so in the front end you are giving the movie name let to search for it let's say for example um avengers right and it is basically giving you based on some processing it is sending this variable to a program and asking whether this is present in the library or not and then it searches within the library and give you the output whether avengers is present or not based on if condition and what are all the searching algorithm that it uses and then you know you have the output so what is going over here we have the movie name as a string in teacher if you don't have this flexibility you won't be able to search the string or you won't be able to do the string operations within your software which is almost like impossible uh, to use any software because this is how the natural programming really works or the natural processing really works uh, numbers are fine but along with that you also have to have an integer so that it's it's like a complete package for you so that's how you can define the different types integer float and the and the string um, variables now how you can basically um, combine the string so here we have seen the star if we do if we want to add we can do plus over here it will add two values but what about if we need to add two values so my first program is this and what i will do is and another is movie name so what if if i want to add these two strings right uh, just a common operation since i have shown you the numeric i will show you the operation related to the string so to do that what i need to do my underscore first all right i think i pressed tab that's why it has come and then star if i press movie and press tab movie name so i don't have to write an entire thing i will i have just written the movie and pressed the tab and it has given me the full name so that's a uh, quick tip for you so star is nothing but a concatenation operator over here so if i press Control enter okay it has given me the error what is this error my program first my first program that's the mistake my first so i think that is because of the tab that i pressed i think once or twice so my first program movie name the beautiful movie world adventures right it has concatenated because there was no space so there that's why nothing is given but you can give space and everything and we will see it a lot of different functionalities in a different video altogether where we will be covering a lot about the string operation so so the last thing which i want to finally cover is the type of function so some there are some built-in function one one of the built-in function you have already seen which is print function i used it in a julia 
uh, at the very initial stage of this video so or, or this entire video series that I have created in the Julia command prompt which was nothing but writing hello world and if I press shift enter it gives me the fun so this was nothing but a function right and there is another function which is type of you will use it a lot for sure when you are in within a pretty big program because many times you have to evaluate what type of value a particular variable contains so what that means is my first program what is this whether it is a numeric or whether it is a uh, whether it is a string value because uh, you don't really know what a front-end user may supply let's say your program is expecting a string but your user is entering one two three which it does not understand and if it does not understand it will throw an error and it may happen that software may crash too so what usually happen is when we write a program we always evaluate an input which we are receiving from the user based on the input we try, we evaluate using the uh, using the line of codes and then tell the user if it is a wrong input or the right input so right now we are just checking what a variable contains here in this case control enter it is a string right and now i will look at the loan underscore amount what type of variable it is it is integer 64 bit because my system is 64 bit uh, if your system is 32 bit you will get int 32 the next is i think interest rate as you can see i just entered the interest and pressed the tab it took automatically underscore and rate that's a shortcut always apply this as you can see once uh, i have been applying it from a long time so it's like back of my mind and i continuously or uh, keep on writing the code uh, in a fast way in this if, if i utilize these shortcuts so what is the type of uh, interest rate it should be float so let's see yep that is float 64 and 64 nothing but the operating system that i have which which is 30 uh, sorry 64 bit if you have a os of 32 bit or a system of 32 bit then you will get the 32 over here float 32 so that's a variable very very important variable that you will use once you have a pretty much uh, a good grip on the julia so that's about it now i will meet you in the next video